It's fall in my zone 5B garden. Still some things we can do to help support pollinators before winter comes. Let's take a look at my favorite top five plants that definitely benefit pollinators and they're pretty low maintenance. And this is a, an anemone that I planted. This is the first year it's bloomed. I had it in another spot where it was just too dry. It didn't thrive, so I moved it here where it stays pretty damp, but does get afternoon sun. So it's flowering for the first time and pollinators love this. And this is my biggest pollinator magnet. Again, it's a little, it's early morning, so they haven't come here yet, but Blue Agastache, Agastache, Blue Agastache, Blue Fortune is the name of this. And you can see some pollinators in there, some bees. This is their favorite plant. All different kinds of bees are on this. Yeah, I even have bees sleep on this thing so they get first dibs in the morning when the sun warms up enough to make them active. So I've planted a couple more of these for 2024 because this is definitely, it's a beautiful tall blue plant that likes lean dirt, full sun, and it's happy. I like those low maintenance kind of plants. And this thing is huge. Sedum is another good pollinator plant for late summer and fall. Bees and butterflies love this. It's just starting to open up. In fact, I planted some boom chocolata and some dark sedum here because again, with all of the tree roots that are throughout this area, it's hard to get something to thrive. This is where their pomonium was and it was struggling. It's just too sunny and dry here. So I replaced it by putting something in that I know is going to work in this area. And that is some sedum. They're pretty hardy and tough and don't need, in fact, they don't like a lot of water. So I put that in there because I know also end of season, I'm going to get some pollinators that like it. Isn't that right? Yes, it is. So that's something that will work here. We'll see how it goes. In fact, when I got this started, it was just a, a part of the plant that broke off. I just um, poked a little hole in the soil and stuck it in directly and watered it. And look at it took off. You know, it came up from nothing. So that's real easy to propagate sedums. Here's another one. Morning Glory. Now, some people will consider this a weed. It is vigorous and you have to keep on top of this thing because it will absolutely take over and throw a bunch of seeds. But I planted this one year and it comes back all of the others. So I just like the flowers up in the morning and he just saw a bee fly away from there. Um, this kind of reminds me of my childhood growing up, growing up on the farm. We had this huge um, vine of morning glory, white and purple and pink, that just naturally grew along our farm fence. So that's why I grow this one. And I know pollinators like it, bees like it, butterflies. I've seen hummingbirds on this thing. And I got it to grow over the trellis after trying unsuccessfully to get, um, oh, hey there, little one trying unsuccessfully to get roses to grow over this. Um, here in zone five, 5B, it just gets too cold, really, over the winter to expect uh, a rose to be long enough to grow robustly enough to not have winter die back. And the problem is they'll get maybe halfway up this trellis and then it's deep freeze, it's winter time and it dies down to the ground, you lose a couple feet and you have to start all over again every year. So. This year I'm trying something different. I'm trying some um, clematis. This is ten Tangutica, which is supposed to be um, very strong, very robust. It'll have pretty yellow flowers. They're 
just about ready to open, but we'll see if it's able to fill in at least half of this. Uh, the other thing I do for this morning glory to make sure it doesn't take over the space. Oh, I just missed the hummingbird. Do you see him? Did I scare him away? Oh no. He just came right at me, the hummingbird. Oh shoot. Well, let me get out of the way in case he comes back. Because I know he's after this morning glory before it closes up at midday. And this is a type of Veronia lettermanii. Um, I think it's iron butterfly. I'll have to look that up. But again, it gets late season, bright purple flowers and pollinators love it. Bees, I've seen hummingbirds on this. Three different kinds of bees. And again, it's another one of those that needs lean soil, dry, full sun. But it looks gorgeous. This is the third year for this particular type of Veronia. That's it for now. Thanks for joining me at the Milkweeds and Roses Garden. I hope that you hit the like and subscribe button. It's free. You don't get spam emails or anything like that. And who's got time for that in their inbox? You know what I mean? Uh, let me know if you have some questions and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.